Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 20 of Non-Monogamy Help. I'm Lola Phoenix. Non-Monogamy Help, in case this is your first time listening, is a relationships advice podcast for people in non-monogamous polyamorous and open relationships and it comes out every other week. Um, It's also a column. If you are unaware, you can read the column at medium.com forward slash non hyphen monogamy hyphen help. The podcast and the columns are posted there every week when they come out. If you would like to get the columns and the podcast in your inbox, in case you forget to check things, you can sign up to our email newsletter at tinyletter.com forward slash non monogamy help, no hyphens. And you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com non monogamy help as well. And if you want to be amazing, super super appreciate it you can become a patron of the podcast and the columns at patreon.com forward slash lola phoenix if you donate five dollars or more per month then your name will be read at the end of each podcast if you consent to that so yeah let's get to this week's letter This is a bit of a long email. I hope you can read it without too much judgment. Thank you in advance. I'm interested in entering a consensual non-monogamous relationship with my husband. We're both 32. We met in college and we've been together for 10 years. The last two is a married couple. For the most part, we're fa- we are fairly traditional. The exception is that we've spent the entire relationship, including marriage, at least four hours apart. I'd like to stress that I'm 90% happy with our relationship. We have the same long-term goals, values, and interests. We both love what we do. That's why we live so far apart. Frankly, I think distance has been good. Weekends are always spent together. Our communication is top-notch because we make it a point to talk about our feelings. What's the 10% I'm not happy about? There's zero passion between us. It's never been great, but it's gotten worse over the last three years. I literally consider sexual relations as a duty, not a joy. It's affecting our relationship badly. It used to be that I was excited to see him, but not physically be with him. Now, I'm a little indifferent. He's a great guy, and I don't want to lose him. In the past year, I've become very close with another with another other man. Let's call him X. X and I have an, have amazing physical chemistry. There's passion and, a fun, and fun in a way I've never experienced. He's professed love for me many times without any sort of prompting on my end. Emotionally, we're very attached. He and I have very much been in a relationship this whole time. I know this is wrong by most standards. It doesn't feel wrong. The thought of either of the The thought of either of them having sexual relations with someone else frankly doesn't bother me. In fact, I often encourage excess safe enjoyment. With this in mind, I'm interested in openly exploring non-monogamy with my husband. I would never tell him I had been unfaithful. That kind of honesty would destroy him. But maybe we should explore it? How do I bring bring up this in conversation. He's fairly traditional, but always been open to new ideas. I think it'd be good for him too. I think my lack of sexual enjoyment has hurt his ego and a partner who enjoys him would be great. Don't berate me too much about X. So, okay, here's the thing. This may not feel wrong to you, but it is. It is wrong, and I think you know that. Polyamory can sometimes begin with cheating. It doesn't always, like very, very rarely, from what I've seen and and how much I've given advice on it, very, very rarely does it ever occur that both people in a couple situation decide at the same time that they are interested in non-monogamy. Usually it's one person's idea to bring up or something like this happens and so it's not completely unusual. I don't think it's impossible necessarily to go from being dishonest to being in an open relationship. However, what you have right now is is not the th- what you think it is. So you're, you're saying that everything's great with your relationship, you have great communication, but you don't. You don't have good communication because you are you have this massive secret and you know that it is something that you need to keep from your partner. You know you can't honestly tell your partner, so that's not great communication. And I really feel like, I think polyamory and open relationships or ethical non-monogamy, whatever you want to call it, I think it can become a you know i think it can come from cheating but i think honesty has to be a big part of that you want a consensual non-monogamous relationship but right now you have an unconsensual non-monogamous relationship and your husband doesn't know about that and the second that 
you know, basically, the only way for, if, even if you bring this up, even if it works out the way that you envision it working out, and you get to date X, and you get to date your husband at the same time, you're going to have to maintain this lie. You and X are going to have to maintain this lie to your husband in perpetuity. And it's one thing to, like, you know, sometimes I do think people get, you know, they, they kind of meet someone, they get kind of infatuated and feelings develop and they try to kind of deny it to themselves and they end up flirting a lot and then they're like, oh no, but is this cheating? Oh, I don't know. I'm confused. I'm da, 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 da. And eventually they realize that they've made a mistake and then they go, shit, I've cheated and now what do I do? And then they're honest. But, but th that situation is it for that to happen in the past and for you to say okay i've i've cheated i've been emotionally clearly intimate with this person and i've been dishonest with you about it you know that's okay for you to have done that and then realize your mistake admit your mistake be honest with your partner and say i really want to pursue non-monogamy i've been dishonest but i'd like to work on repairing our trust however if you decide okay i'm not going to tell him the truth because that kind of honesty would destroy him, as you said, then you will never have a consensual non-monogamous relationship because you ha have been lying this entire time and you will have to continue to lie. Even if you he now knows about X, you will continuously have to lie. And I really, really don't think that that's going to work. Like, it's it's very, very obvious, you know, because this happens all the time, not with people who consensually and aware knowingly cheat, but it happens where somebody kind of develops an attraction to somebody else, and that is sort of spearheading their interest in non-monogamy. And then they approach their partner about it, and then it's sort of like the, you know, baking and cooking shows where they're like, oh, this is the recipe. By the way, here's one I made earlier. They just kind of pull out this, oh, just so happens that there's this person I'm interested in. Like, it's, you can't pretend and that kind of thing is just happenstance. And even if you decide to like maybe lay it low or something for like a couple of like a month or so to give some space, then you're still lying to your husband about it. You're still creating a false narrative and you're going to have to like forever. Like let's say you end up it like with X and with your husband and those two relationships are great for you and you are in these relationships for the rest of your life, you're going to have to lie for the rest of your life to until like I guess maybe you're like 70 or something and you finally decide that it's okay to tell him. I mean, if you think that like, you know, you have to understand from his perspective like you have a good relationship, you're very communicative with each other. And he's already, ha you know, you already said that your lack of sexual enjoyment is hurting his ego. So how much more is this going to really gut punch him? The fact that not only, you know, is his ego bruised from how difficult your relationship has been, but that you've lied to him <laughs> this entire time. And he's going to have a lot of feelings about that. And it's going to be very, very obvious. Like, I just don't think you're realistically going to be able to pull it off by not telling him it's going to come out the truth is going to come out eventually and when it does come out it's going to be 10 times as worse than if you would have just told him the truth so point blank i'm saying if what you want is a consensual non-monogamous relationship you don't have that now and you can't ask for that if you're not willing to be honest and i think that you know that it's not right what you're doing because you're telling me not to berate you for it. And another thing that you really need to think about is that X must know that you have a partner unless you're lying to X as well. And if X knows that you have a partner, that means that X is fine professing his love for you knowing that you're with someone else. And I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, I, I can understand that people get into situations, especially when you have a long distance relationship, your partner is four hours away, you don't see them every day. That can be hard on most people. A lot of people would never agree to that kind of a relationship in the first place. And then you meet someone, you have a really good connection. And like, I do get how, especially if you're out, if you've had some drinks, like one thing leads to another, I can totally understand how that can happen but that's very very different in terms of that you know accidentally happening that's very very different from someone obviously being very emotionally intense with you knowing that you have a partner and being absolutely fine with declaring their love for you like that to me is that is a red flag 
you know, if someone is, I'm not saying that this is always the case because, you know, there's billions of people on the planet and everyone's different, but if someone is fine with breaking the rules and boundaries of someone else with you, then theoretically they're fine with breaking your rules and boundaries. So you're, you're wanting to start these new relationships, but everything is not built on any foundation of trust or honesty. Even the relationship that you have with X, while you may really love it because it's, it has all the spark and passion that your current relationship lacks, it's still based on dishonesty and X is fine with that. And I think that's something that you really need to think about. Like, are you, you know, th cause they say like, I'm not sure what the exact quote is with something like cheaters cheat or cheater always cheat. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it really depends on the situation. I think sometimes people get swept away and that's understandable, but I do think it's worth thinking about if someone is willing to be dishonest and lie to someone in front of you with you, then it does put into question what they're willing to do, you know, not with you, not there. That all said, you could hear what I've said and say, okay, how about I just be honest with my husband, I tell him about what's happened with X, we try to start from ground zero, rebuild our trust, is that a good idea? I'm really, really wondering why it is you're even holding on to this relationship. Like, I get that you have a good relationship, maybe not a romantic or sexual relationship, but you have a kind of this established base together, you have some good communication, you enjoy spending time together, but that isn't enough reason to, to you know, your percentages where you're like, I'm 90% happy with it, but 10% I'm not. You know, it, it doesn't really matter if you're happy with most of it, if that 10% is like, you know, really, really crucial to you being happy in your whole life. Like, you can be 99.9% .9 compatible with someone. Like, you could meet someone who is, everything that you've ever dreamed of but one issue that is critically important that cannot be compromised on like let's say you meet someone who is absolutely perfect but you do not want to have kids and they do there's no compromising that really like i mean i can't really think of a situation like you can wait there's a you know maybe but you really shouldn't have a kid if you don't want to have a kid. And people who do want to have children, if they were, you know, stuck in a relationship where they couldn't, would eventually end up feeling resentment. There's a kind of, for certain people, depending on how their body works, there's a time clock of availability of when they can have a kid. So it's one of those things. Like, you, everything else could be absolutely perfect. But that one detail changes everything. So... Yeah, you have the same long-term goals, values, and interests. You both love what you do, and you spend some nice time together. You sound like good friends. You don't have to be in a romantic relationship with each other. And I think that you're kind of a, a bit trapped in what's called a sunken cost fallacy, which means that like you've already put so much into this that you think you have to keep going with it. But you really don't have to keep going with it. I know you've been together for 10 years and maybe that's like partly is like your fear because you've always had this base with this person so you're really afraid to give it up but I don't think if it's not actually working for you that it's worth keeping like why would you try to salvage this especially when you know you can find someone else who also has the same long-term goals I mean realistically right now if you want non-monogamy like even if you were to break up with your husband and go with X and you still want a non-monogamy you wouldn't share the same long-term goals you know you don't really have the same values you don't actually do because you in your relationship want some passion which is understandable and you say it's gotten worse you say that you know I mean you could go to couples counseling but I just feel like you know you're in a situation you live four hours apart and you're just forcing this relationship to stay and I don't think that you need to especially if you're monogamous and especially if you know you say you want him to to have a partner who enjoys him let him have that let him go let yourself go try it with x maybe it won't work with x who knows but there's no reason to keep the, just because you have had this history does doesn't mean that you need to keep it and it's better for it's far far better for you to part ways amicably to go okay um 
you know, we both like each other, we're both friends, we both have a good rapport, but clearly this romantic relationship isn't working out. We clearly both want a relationship where we do feel attracted to one another, and we don't at this point. Sometimes, even if people have a history of having that kind of good attraction, it does go away. Now, I would, I mean, one thing I would also add, just as a caveat, is that people do tend to find, you know, when you have a new relationship, it's new, sparkly, brand new, and you have a lot of passion, especially, like, if you, if everything's brand new. There is a lot of what's called new relationship energy that goes along with that. Like, everything's new and sparkly and shiny and exciting, and then especially, like, usually it's when people move in together, to be honest, things become a little bit humdrum. And it's not necessarily that that's a bad thing, and I do think sometimes people get this false expectation, like, new relationship energy gets them really excited, and that's what they want relationships to always be. And it's it, it usually isn't like that. Not necessarily because there's something wrong with moving in together, or forming into a monogamous relationship where you don't see other people um a lot of people would use that as an example of why humans aren't naturally monogamous or whatever i just think that sometimes you know it's it's sort of similar to like any relationship in your life or even like getting a new phone or a new computer like when like it doesn't even have to be a relationship like when you get a new phone you're like oh wow and like eventually you get used to having it there and it, it has a different type of relationship in your life i really shouldn't compare people to things but the, but the, i think it's the same like with a new friend you meet a new friend you become best friends and you know eventually like you have a different kind of relationship as the relationship matures it's a different kind of relationship and some people do just tend to find that passion dies in their relationship. And I kind of feel like sometimes, as they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And sometimes, you know, being apart can actually help people because then they get excited when they see each other again. But in your case, if you're not even excited now, like if you're four hours apart and you're not even that excited when you see him again like what is what's your overall game plan you're gonna move in together you're gonna get married you're gonna have kids i mean i don't know what you what your long-term goals are but i just feel like you're just forcing this relationship to stay and you don't really have any good reason for it other than the fact that you've been together for 10 years and you've spent two as a married couple and you know you think you because there's so many things for you to list as positives you don't get you're not weighing things out by how much they mean to you and how much of an impact it has in terms of what you actually want out of a relationship you know you may have the same long-term goals and values in life and you both may love your jobs but that doesn't mean that you're inherently destined to be together in a romantic relationship or that a romantic relationship even works for you so I think that you need to like really think about why it is that you're so intent on keeping this when there's no passion in it, even though you're emotionally very attached to each other, or at least, you know, you're actually emotionally attached to X, but like it, you seem to have this really strong bond with your husband and that's cool. But if there isn't any passion and that's what you want, then it's not worth just trying to hold on tight to this relationship. It's, like I said, it's far, far better for you to split on amicable terms, you know, and you don't necessarily have to, if you decide to split, you don't necessarily have to confess that you've kind of been, I assume that you haven't done anything physical with X because you just said that you've kind of had this emotional, emotional relationship. I mean, you say you, you've been very much in a relationship this whole time. I don't know what that means if you've actually physically done things with him, in which case that's an STI risk. And I do think it's fair to tell your husband that even if you are splitting up because it's just, you know, he, sh he should know to get tested or you should like, I just think it's fair to disclose in that regard. But if you haven't and you've just kind of been a little bit emotionally tied to this guy and you've kind of not said you're officially in a relationship, but you've basically been in a relationship, then you could technically decide to break it off with your husband without having to tell him about X. I wouldn't, I just think honesty is the best policy in most cases because I just think that whenever you have a, a lie this big, it's inevitably going to come back and bite you in the ass. So you should just be honest about it, especially like if you're breaking up. I mean, yeah, it'll hurt, like it hurts to be cheated on, but it's not, it, it, like I, I, and I know you say it will destroy him, but there are things that are going to happen in life that are going to be shit. And 
he is responsible you know he I'm pretty sure he can find a therapist I'm pretty sure he can deal with his own emotions that's not like a reason to hide the truth from him just because you don't think he can handle it like you ultimately you aren't really the arbiter of what he can and can't handle he's a grown-ass adult he's adult enough to be in a relationship so that kind of ha is part of it do you know what I'm saying so yeah I overall <laughs> I think that it's not a good idea. If you, if what you want is a consensual non-monogamous relationship, you're never going to have that if you are unwilling to tell your husband that you've been unfaithful. You're never going to have a consensual non-monogamous relationship because even if you were to introduce it to him, even if, 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 even if it was the ideal situation, you introduced it to him and he was like, actually, yeah, I've always been interested in this. Let's do it. Great. But you're going to have to continuously be dishonest about X. You're never going to tell him the truth. So he's consenting to something, consenting to you dating, consenting to being in this non-monogamous relationship with you from that point. He isn't consenting from the point that you decided to be non-monogamous, basically. So you're never going to have a consensual non-monogamous relationship with your husband if you refuse to be honest about what you've done. And I, again, I stress, like, as part of the wrap-up, there's no point in dragging this out if you're at a base level incompatible. Like, you sound like great friends. Like, he sounds like a great friend for you to have. Like, and you can be friends. You can chat with each other. You can talk with each other. You know, you can meet up when, when times call for it. But you don't have to be in a romantic relationship. I know it's hard sometimes, especially when you've been together for someone, with someone for so long. And it just feels like, how are you ever going to live without one another? And it's a very, very scary thing. Especially if, like, so if you've been together for 10 years and you're 32, then that means you've been together since you're about 22. Which I don't know if you went to uni. But, like, theoretically, like, you're almost high school sweetheart. So I, I don't know how much you dated before you were in kind of this monogamous relationship. But if you've been gone for such a long time without actually dating or getting out there, it can seem really scary. But that's not a reason to just stay in the relationship. And it's also not fair to him. Waiting until, playing this sort of weird chicken, you know, relationship chicken, and waiting until someone calls it quits, like don't do that I both of you like you're not you, you know you have time to to figure out what it is to find partners who are in at least in the same city like there's there's really no reason to just keep this going I really don't like that because I don't like it when my advice is like break up because I do feel like that's like I don't know it feels like it's the typical advice it's like just break up just break up but like in this situation especially if you are never going to tell him the truth. It's just, you may think that you are going to be able to keep it under wraps. I mean, let's hope you don't, and X, because like, you're also relying on X to basically keep, keep his trap shut for the rest of however it is that you are together. You know, if you have a bad breakup with X, if things don't work out, all that passion turns to anger, and X decides to tell your partner, you know, like you're, you're, assuming that you can lie and I just don't think like he has to, your husband would have to be ex an extremely naive person to not realize that something's going on I mean granted he is four hours away so there might be a lot he doesn't see but I just don't think that you're going to be able to keep that lie and there's no reason to so yeah I, <laughs> I really hate that that's kind of my advice in this certain circumstance but I do really feel like ultimately you you have a good overall relationship but you're not clearly romantically compatible and it's sometimes like don't try to shove it and make it work you know separate amicably as amicably as possible like breakups always suck but separate in 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 the nicest way that you can and that's so much better especially if you want to be friends down the long run and in, in the long run like it's so much better to split up amicably and so much easier for people to theoretically heal from an amicable amicable split than just trying to force your husband into being non-monogamous so that you can continue seeing the person you've cheated on him with like it just it that's that's not ethical non-monogamy that's just you wanting to see the person that you wanting to have permission to cheat but without having permission because you're still not going to be honest with your husband about it so it's just best to to end it unfortunately so yeah I'm I hope that helps I'm not berating you for cheating I just think that you know honesty is the best policy and there's a reason for that 
and it's it might be worth you thinking about in the future because I don't even necessarily know if you're actually non-monogamous you know it, it's not as if you're interested in you know you say that you'd be fine with your husband or ex sleeping with other people but that's easy to say from the position that you're in right now um, a lot of people before like a lot of people who are super gung-ho about polyamory think oh this would be great like people who are super gung-ho about polyamory people whose idea it was to become polyamorous constantly find themselves in a situation where as soon as their partner starts seeing other people they get scared as hell and it becomes a situation that they were not prepared for so d you really aren't going to be able to tell and I don't know is that you're actually interested in it so yeah <laughs> I'm going to end it here because I feel like I'm a bit repeating myself but I hope that helps honestly <laughs> and good luck Thank you for listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Once again, if you want to read the column, or I also post podcasts on medium.com forward slash non hyphen monogamy hyphen help. If you want to get it in your inbox, and because you can't check Twitter or check whatever, you can you can sign up to the email newsletter at tinyletter.com forward slash non monogamy help. And you can get tweets about it occasionally sometimes i drop the ball a bit but usually you can get tweets about it at twitter.com forward slash non-monogamy help no hyphens and if you want to be amazing you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash lola phoenix if you donate five dollars or more per month then you will get your name right at the end of the podcast which i'm gonna do right now our patrons are laura boylan chris albury jones franzi and james wartell awesome thank you so much for listening and have a awesome day and i will see you the next time you listen to the podcast i really i'm one day i will figure out how to say goodbye without it being so bloody awkward but until then yeah cheers bye <laughs> You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com and the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>